So hey, are you all starting out there to start thinking about prepping? You've had enough of all the different shortages and all the chaos and everything else that's been going on. Things that have happened over the last two years and we're still going through it. Not knowing what's going to be in the grocery stores. Well, on today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to cover some things that you need to make sure that you're thinking about. So today's video is things to consider when starting prepping. All right. Now, some of the things that you really need to consider when you're starting prepping, folks, it's not so much as going out and buying all your canned goods and those type of things. Okay, those things are already packaged. As long as you store them in a cool, dry place, we all know that those are going to last you for quite a long time. You just have to have some place to store those things which could be in your pantry. I've done videos on putting up some shelves. You could use different areas of your house, whatever it may be. But when it comes to all your dry goods and everything else that you're going to want to prep for, say your rice, your beans, flour, sugar, salt, spices, oats, you name it, any type of like dry goods and all those different type of things, you have to think about how you want to store those and how you can afford to store all those different ingredients. You have to think of these things and consider what you're going to do with these products if you can find them in the store and you want to put away some for a rainy day. So let's go over some of the different products and things that you may want to think about using and some products that you could use in short term, but not for long term. So here, let's get going on this video. First off, I'd like to thank you for joining me on Survival Preparedness for Beginners today. And we're going to be talking about some of the things that you need to have in your arsenal before you take that first step in that grocery store to buy those products. All right. I would highly suggest that people think about getting something like a food saver. All right, I have mine right here. All right, this food saver is a great food saver. Comes with the attachment that this way here, you can vacuum seal jars and everything else. They also make containers that you can vacuum seal if you can afford those type of things. But having a vacuum sealer is a great addition to your arsenal and putting away food for a very long time. Let me give you an instance, okay? So you can vacuum seal your rice, your beans, and all those type of dry goods. You can vacuum seal meat if you find it at a good sale. And all those type of products, meat and fish and everything else. And if you put it in your freezer, this gives you at least a good year on those products that are going to stay fresh they're not going to get the freezer burn and stuff like if you use your standard little, you know, Ziploc bags, your freezer bags, whichever kind you want to buy. The Walmart brand are about the cheapest. All right. <clears throat> These are going to get you probably about two months before you start to see freezer burn and everything else. This is going to get you about a year or more. I've had people make comments on some of my videos that they've had meat and stuff that they've frozen using their vacuum sealer that are well over a year old. So investing your money into a good vacuum sealer would be probably one of the number one things that you could do. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about using your freezer bags. Now, you can use your freezer bags for short term. I wouldn't freeze any meats or anything in these any longer than two months because after that, folks, you're going to start to see the crystallization and you're also going to start to see that the meat and stuff 
isn't going to be the same. And when you cook it, it's not going to taste right. It may still be kind of good, but it's going to get that freezer burn and it just changes the whole dynamics of the meat that you've put away. And at this point in time, meat is so expensive. You want to try to stay away from these unless it's just a short term deal. You bought some steaks and stuff and you're going to be using them within the next few weeks. Perfectly fine to use these bags right here. Now, these bags would be great for marinating and everything else. You can use these bags also if you want to store dry goods short term. All right. I wouldn't store your dry goods in these bags any longer than three months. Okay. If you don't have anything else, but you have these, just remember no longer than three months in these bags. All right. Now, the reason being is you can't suck the air out. You think you can leave that little end open, you know, and squeeze out whatever that's. There's still a lot of air in there, folks. You just don't see it. And all it takes is just a little bit of air. And the next thing you know, it's going to go bad on you or you're going to get bugs, whatever it may be, depending on what you're storing in there. Next, lock and lock. Now, I've talked about using these lock and locks. You can get these in Walmart, Amazon, uh, Target, wherever. They sell them all over the place, all right? These are great for short-term storage. You can store your flour. You can store sugar, beans, rice, whatever else. You can store it in these things for short-term. See, the problem with these, again, is even though it's a lock and lock and has a nice rubber seal and everything else, when you put the lid on and you lock it, well, folks, there's still air trapped inside. Air is what you got to get away from. Moving on down the line, you can use canning jars. Now, I know a lot of people have said they're having problems finding canning jars. Now, I put out in one of my videos here a while back, I ordered like three different sizes of canning jars and I got them on walmart.com and they still were relatively cheap. Now, I don't know as of this video if they're still available or not, but it'd be worth checking into. All right. They were the cheapest that I could find. I have seen them in local grocery stores. They are kind of expensive, not the Walmart stores, your other grocery stores. But if you have a vacuum sealer, that has the attachment, you can store dry goods and everything else in here, vacuum seal it, it sucks the air out. And if you wanted to, at that point in time, you could take your oxygen absorber, drop one in there, vacuum seal it, and any air that could be left in that little container, this is gonna suck out and it's gonna secure you and putting away your food for long-term storage. Now, if you're going to dehydrate your food, if you have a dehydrator and you're going to dehydrate your food and you want to use your canning jars to put them in or possibly even like Marlar bags that we're going to talk about here in a minute and everything else, then you know what? You need to get one thing to put in with these jars when you are dehydrating. Silica packs. Now, the difference between the silica pack... And the oxygen absorber is, this takes the oxygen out, this takes the moisture out. All right, so if you're going to be doing your dehydrated goods, and you want to make sure that when you put those into your jars or bags or however you're going to store them, you want to make sure that there's no moisture left. So you could, you know, you double check your, your dehydration when you're done, your products and everything else, and you wanna make sure that they are dry. At least they seem dry. But when you put them in something to store them, throw one of these packs in there, and this way here, any moisture that's left in there will draw it out, and it won't allow the bacteria to grow that's gonna contaminate the whole jar or bag of all the frozen or fresh vegetables, meats, whatever it is that you just dehydrated, it's not going to ruin everything. Now, let's talk about Mylar bags. Now, your Mylar bags, 
if you can get my LR bags. They come in a lot of different sizes. As you can see, I have some little ones here. I have a gallon size. All right, because I usually buy a variety pack because these are great if you want to store some spices and things, um, smaller portions, like I've talked about doing. Uh, this is a one pound bag. You can fit a whole five pound bag of flour in here with no problem whatsoever. And then at the very bottom here, for all you people that <clears throat> just like to store all your little goodies all in one basket, you can get the five gallon bag that you can take and store in your buckets. Okay, now you take that five gallon bag, you put it into here. All right, now when you're buying these, all right, right now, at least in my area, I've had a hard time finding just regular buckets. A lot of people are either catching on or they're storing other things in here. I don't know. But I ordered these off Walmart to three pack. It was a little expensive, I thought, but I got a three pack for like 35 bucks. Little on the pricey side for me, but I needed some buckets. So I always go with just the basic lid, this way here, it's got the rubber seal and everything right in here. You put whatever you want to store in here, you put this on, use a rubber mallet, you can use a hammer, pound this on, and then the only other thing you have to make sure that you do have is your handy dandy little lid puller that you can still buy at anywhere, uh, Home Depot, Walmart, and all this. These things are like a buck or two. Now, depending on some of the Mylar bags and things that you do buy, they'll come with all these great little stickers and all kinds of stuff like that. And this way you can label your products and you know what it is, the dates, and everything else. So with this video, what I wanted to cover was is the things that you have to consider before you start prepping is where are you going to put all this stuff? And how are you going to store it so that it's going to last as long as as you need it to last what your agenda is when you are prepping in closing the number one thing you have to think about when you are doing your prepping when you're beginning prepping and everything else maybe this even goes for some of you uh seasoned preppers you know you're starting to run out of uh room ideas and everything else you got to sit back and think okay if i'm gonna buy say 40 pounds of rice how am i going to store it what am i going to store it in so that's going to last me 20 years or more the same with all your other different products using a vacuum sealer is another great way you can do your dry goods you can do your meats and everything else and freeze them you could do fresh vegetables and then vacuum pack them and freeze them uh, you know the with the vacuum sealer i think that is the number one piece of equipment that you have to have in your arsenal and your toolbox to make sure that you can succeed in prepping the proper way i'm survival preparedness for beginners i'd like to thank you for joining me today on this video i hope that everybody has learned a little something and remember to consider different things when you're starting prepping because this is key to your survival in ensuring that your food will be good for a very long time so until next time folks i will catch all of you on the flip side mm -hmm.